Hello and welcome to Beauty Diaries. I am Namure Edwemioya. This week we'll be bringing to you wigs. Bringing to you means we'll be talking about wigs. Okay, as women, over the years, our mothers used to wear wigs. Uh, some of us thought it was old fashioned and we stopped. And then later we went into Chinese weaver. You remember for some, if you, if you actually went to Yaba to buy Chinese weaver, raise up your hand <laughs> and other markets. Anyway, we went into weavons, uh, going to the salon, have our hair braided, and then we'll, you know, sew the weavon on our head. And then gradually braids, um, Ghana weaving, a lot of other hairstyles. Until um, we progressed into the 90s, 20s, and people started uh, buying weavons from other countries. Okay, we had weavons from Peru, uh, Cambodian weavon, uh, Brazilian weavon was the first, I tell you, and so many. And um, later on, we changed from weavon to wigs. People thought, no, wigs will not stand the test of time, but that is what it is now. Most of us wear wigs because we want to be comfortable for our personal reasons okay and um, fashion status we wear wigs so today we'll be talking about wigs how to wear your wigs how to take care of your hair under your wigs and um, so much more we'll be right back after this break and then we'll meet our guests you're welcome my guest is doing the Percy of Bezos Beauty Bar Doing welcome to the Thank you show. for having me. Thank Pleasure. you. Thank you for your time. You. So, you're into hair and all the works. How did it all start for you? Well, it didn't start from hair. Mm -hmm. I studied cell biology and genetics at school. But while I was at school, I just I think I've always loved hair. I'll since. take you back. Cell biology, biology and, and genetics. Genetics. Okay. Yeah. What's that? It's uh it's the study of DNA and oh. how <laughs> and how we're made and all of that okay. for, and basically is sciences but I have always loved beauty and hair so that's how we got here <laughs> <laughs> now hair generally yeah. um, how did this did you just open a store or mm, were you, I mean, you always have to I feel like you start small you know you get the whole um, process of the business and then you can go that far. I started small, I started doing my own hair. I would buy my bundles or whatever it is and go to the salon and say, you know, I would like my hair to look like this and mm -hmm. I would be there literally directing people on how to do my hair. Salons didn't like me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I mean, I feel like that has shaped how I look a hair and how I always like my hair and my clients hair to look and so I feel like that you know little bit of madness has helped me. Interesting now in my introduction earlier we talked about um, the different types of hair yeah. so you are in the authority to tell us you know more about these hair different hair. types of yeah. hair. So I mean like you said it all started from a uh, long time ago and in Nigeria it was Brazilian hair at some mm. point you know everyone wanted that Brazilian hair because when you see it it actually looks like human hair and from there you know Brazilian hair was quite you know on the high side at some point and then we, we people had to look for what was affordable and still looked as good so Asia was introduced it was China, Cambodian Chinese and then India, people India, went to India as well. Yes. And so when all of that came about, and it was more like a regulation where people can buy as high as possible and as low as possible, which is still today. And you know, everyone has access to any type of hair they want now. I we do both, you know, South American and um, Asian. Asian, hair. South American and Asian. Okay. How do you know these? Uh, these because. I, I can't tell right now. I know of Russian Fede, I know of Cambodia, I know of Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jan. Uh, they, I, I feel like I, um, over the years, I've been able to tell through texture. Or okay. just like first look, you 
even when you don't know where it's from, I always feel like you can tell from the texture what looks good and you know what your you know is not your thing. And then moving on by touch when you touch it, when you run your hands through it, when you brush it, some shed, some don't. There are even some that tangle but don't shed. You know. So there yes. are different aspects. You just have to know what you're looking for. If you're looking for thick hair, you're looking for thick hair that won't tangle so much. So you don't go through the stress of you know humidity and then you're tangling while you're okay. outside. Yes. Struggling. At the back especially. Exactly. When mm. it's hot, we all get hot behind our necks. When you put your hand, you're stuck. Mm. You know, all mm. those kind of things. You want to avoid hair that will give you that kind of stress. And from touch brushing you can tell. Okay, so what's the difference between double drawn and is this single? Or yes, double drawn. Let's go through all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so when you look like, a, you look, double drawn is very thick, soft. Okay. It's, it's dense, but very smooth and light. So that's very ironic. Mm. But it's like that. When you touch it, you know you're touching, you know, thick hair, but it's still very soft. And it's still very, you know, how would I call it? Smooth. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Is it from, which country is it from actually? So most double drawn, I mean, I've, I've seen Indian double drawn, I've seen Chinese double drawn. So, you know, they all do it. It's, it's the technique. It's when oh, the hair okay. is um, wefted and the, um, the hair is doubled. Okay, that's what it is. So means. it's not folded halfway when you see, when you see it's folded and then maybe some people fold eight inches, some people fold four, some people fold one. Yes. To the weft. Yes. So double drawn is all the way all the way shed, down. Yes, and it doesn't shed as much as um, the normal. Ones. So that makes it more expensive. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> In some way. Okay. Now let's let's talk about you know the different. We've talked about the different types. Yes. For coloring. Mm. Okay. I buy my hair, and I want to turn it into a particular color. How do I go about it, making sure it does not stain my clothes? Okay, so thank God for, the, <laughs> for what the world has done for us today. We everything has changed and evolved. We don't use all those kind of dyes before because there was a time I dyed my hair yes. black and it colored my white shirt. But now today, you can do you know different kind of dyes that do not stain clothes. They don't transfer. When you do a second, third wash, your hair is still bright or colored okay. and it doesn't transfer. So, you know, all of those things are around now. And when you say you're going for a light color, when you bleach, bleach never transfers. Mm. So that's one thing as well. There's bleach and okay, there's so dye. Okay, so you, oh, you bleach first before you dye? I, well, it depends on what, you know, you're looking for. If you're looking for, to transform from dark hair to light hair, I would say bleach and then, you know, start to put your color your highlights how you want it but if you're going from dark from light to dark mm. and then you don't need bleach you just need to get your spectrums that you want to put on the hair to make it darker or you know any other color and that's just basically dye oh okay now how about styles we have not around everybody i i have a round face yeah. i never ever imagined me wearing um, wig with middle part. middle part because I never liked it. And all of a sudden, I'm liking it. <laughs> For me, it's weird like that. I didn't do a center part until I don't know how long ago. I didn't like it. I thought it was it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. but one day, I just sat down and I just parted my hair. And my first wigs were all um, center parts. After then, I I never really used to do center. And then for a long time, I was nowhere side because so. For different faces, yes. For different styles. So, say some. If you go, if you have a round face, full neck, or you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything that will cut you down here. That um, bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't. Yes. A star. A bob exactly. star. Exactly. You don't want to go too full on that. You can do that, but you don't want to go too full on that. Okay. Because it then increases from here. Okay. You know, like say this kind of full hair yeah you don't want to go too big on it okay around your face ah, but some of us like it split yes but <laughs> move it see look as this is you don't want it to be like that when it's too big okay so you want it away from your face so it looks away. like you're... okay so what are the apart from bob the one you're wearing okay so uh 
what um, for face types mm -hmm. okay so for face types if you want to elongate your face I would say move away from your face if you cover more you're making it look like you're behind something and then it makes you look bigger but for rounder faces if you want to make it look more oblong or oval is to move it away a side part okay would work or a center part that is you know thrown back a little bit like yours now you can you know if it was a frontal because there's also frontal yeah we're going to come closures. to that frontal and what? yes closures uh-huh so if you say you had a frontal that was center part now all you have to do is brush it back you don't even have to talk it behind your ears but you know give your face show your face because some people believe you know when your face is round you want to hide half of it but mm. I believe in showing your thing. Okay. Like um, on the other end, we went on the streets to ask people if they like wearing wigs or if they prefer their natural mm -hmm. hair. And even some men had some things to say. You can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take that. We'll be back after the break. Stay with us. You, you can't carry your natural hair all through the air, so that's why I have my wig on now. Yeah, just change the look, just to switch up. But I prefer my natural hair. The truth is that I don't believe in what they call natural because no human being is natural. Yeah, so, and I don't believe in somebody going out and say I have my natural hair. So I believe that in the world of cosmetics, every woman is beautiful. So, uh, I don't think my wife will go on natural hair or low cut or whatever thing you call it. I like my own on low cut. Maybe because of the expenses, do you understand? But I, as a person, I prefer a, a Yvonne. Yeah, but I don't like a woman with Yvonne. I like her, I like her hair being, being braid, you understand? Yvonne, to me, it's, I don't fancy it. I think I'm more comfortable with my natural hair. However, sometimes I want the wig I'd prefer, if I want to do braids, I prefer to just wear the wig because when I'm, when I'm home or when I'm hot, I can always take it off. So I think it's more comfortable. Then I save time rather than having to sit down and then I can always change styles. I'm most comfortable with my natural hair because it's versatile in my own opinion and I'm very pro-natural hair, the natural hair movement. So yes, I'm most comfortable with it. I only wear protective styles. That's I only braid my hair when I have to protect my hair because of um, the weather. Well, if you ask me if I love uh, wig, I love wig so much. Like, it's so comfortable. Like, with the weather and everything, after market, like, my kind of business, after work, everything, I come home, take it off, and I feel like, wow. You're welcome back. Now, let's talk about frontals and other closures, because we know that... Um, when you're buying hair, the bundles are separate from the closures. Yeah. So tell us about the closures what? and what, what you advise. Which one is better? Some people, so I think both, because I like both. I wear, I still wear both till today. Okay. I, I would do frontal. Sometimes I haven't changed my wig twice a day, so, you know, I might wear oh, okay. a frontal you're in the morning. You're crazy about that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> then do, like, uh, closures in the afternoon. But it depends on people's preferences, but I always advise you have both. Okay. So you can do some of your hair frontal, some, you know, closure. Uh, like with the, there's some new um, frontals, not new, I mean, they're a few years old. Mm. Uh, the Kim K ones, which are longer, they're six inches. If you want that flat, you know, Kim Kardashian long hair kind of look, those ones, I would recommend a good closure that is six inches long. Because okay. it gives you the illusion of, you know, your hair parting is quite long and it sometimes look it looks natural yes. and then uh, for frontals I would say when you're doing side swept bangs when you're doing um, a nice cute bob or a nice cute side side swept short hair like pixie at the back and mm -hmm. then you know a, f um, a, a little side swept bang in the front frontals are always good for that as well um, braids nowadays, people use frontals or full lace. Yeah, I noticed that they can braid mm. and pack their yes. hair and then you have the baby yes. hair and in then front. even with ponytails, mm -hmm. people use frontals now. 
the only thing is that if you if you do not find someone that can customize or you know do your wigs for you and then that's when people don't like their front house because they'll say it doesn't look natural enough i don't like it i'll stick to my closure or well, i say get both they, they both serve different things and different looks now let's talk about this um the way you take care of your wigs and your hair underneath yeah same natural same natural <laughs> yeah even if you you have relaxed hair you know yeah still natural but it's so important to take care of your natural yeah. hair edges I, I i hope nobody gets into an accident but if you tell me to take off my wig now confidently do Ooh, that okay and flaunt my twist <laughs> but all the same i couldn't <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very important to take because some people no, with the um with the use of wigs continuously yeah. they lose their front edges. Their, their edges yes so with that first off i so personally and i always advise as well if you wear wigs a lot if like me uh i would say do your washes twice a week um two times every two weeks sorry okay that's your hair yes your natural hair okay. every two weeks you know you know the kind of products you use but make sure it's every two weeks you get steam or like a moisture kind of uh treatments deep mask or anything that you do do that and then you know put your hair in a protective style that you like yes. whether it's cornrows twists just the weevil back and always wear a wig cap under your wig exactly because the edges because I did this, this was from personal experience. So I used to wear my wigs without wig caps before. Mm. And I noticed that my edges were going back. I mean, I already have a big <laughs> forehead. I'm, I'm not about to lose more. So I, some, one day I walked into a store and I saw a wig cap and I tried it on. And I noticed, oh, it helps brighten my parts. And it also does not snag on my edges. Okay. And since then, I won't lie, my edges have been good. It sounds mm. like, you know do ponytails so I can flaunt my edges <laughs> so yeah it works and ladies need to get into that always wear your um, wig caps yes and also air your wigs and air yeah. your hair because exactly. um, one episode I had about hair loss the doctor said you know we always do this yeah. uh, when it's itching us mm -hmm. and that's because of bacteria forming on our scalp oh, yeah so we need to be able to air um, our, wigs. our wigs and, and then our hair. take care of our yeah. hair. Forty natural. I learned though that when you get home, okay, when you get home, remove your wig, remove your cap, and um, spray your hair. Yes, you can, with, you can do uh, a little bit of water, but water not and coconut oil or yes. oil. Yes, yes, yeah. and never Mixture. wear, never wear your your wig with a damp hair, uh, with, oh, with your hair damp on the so bad. Yes. It each so bad. So, so you don't want to do that. You want your hair to be dry. You want to be comfortable before you put the wig on. True. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your wigs? Do you keep back, put them back in the bags? Do you so hang them? Some of us don't have all of this at home. Exactly. I don't have all of this at home. Mm -hmm. This is in <laughs> store. So before, I used to lay my wigs down in a drawer. So I, oh. um, I separated a drawer for my wigs. And I found that with the side I lay it on, if it was, uh, say, wavy, it would be straight on one side mm. and wavy on one, on one side. So I um, got a hanger, a okay. rack, where I hang my wigs. And so I hang them by either the bands mm -hmm. or just the uh, wig cap itself from the back. Okay. And it stayed like that because I know wigs I haven't worn in months. I've been there. I've been exploring other wigs. And so they've maintained their um, pattern, whether it's straight or wavy. Okay. It's by hanging. All right, by hanging. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other issues when it comes to wigs. Pricing. <laughs> Pricing. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back from the break. You're welcome back. Now, let's talk about pricing. Buying human hair is a fortune for some of us. <laughs> Tell us, for instance, I'm um, to buy this one. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> most the of you way, don't like talking about price. Yes, but the way the human hair world is set up today, 
I feel like if you are, you know, a student, you can afford 30,000, 25,000, you can get something. Okay. So there are different ranges and I love that because everyone can wear, you know, good hair or, you know, next to good hair, but it still, you know, looks good and it's still workable. And I mean, I've seen and touched <laughs> hair of up to 500, 700, and so the, it's between all of that. And so, eh? oh, oh, 500, yes. thousand. Yes. I thought you meant you had touched 500,000 pieces. No, 500,000. <laughs> 500, that they used to say jokingly then, I have a lot of land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Okada is to snatch it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so you have to up to that range. So it depends on your it class. It depends on what you want, on what you, you know, want. what you like. All that's also, you know, boils down to length, volume, texture, you know, Durability. where the hair is from. I've got hair, I think some of the boundaries in this hair are <laughs> older than 10 years. Okay, yeah. so you just keep adding? And if yeah, you need, I do, if you want so, to. Because I your can, needs. I do anyhow with my okay. hair. So I can take from this one, add to that one. This was oh. the front closure. I mean, a month ago, it's now a frontal. I can turn yeah. it into bundles again. So I think wigs are very versatile. Okay. okay. So it depends just by what yeah. you want and what you can afford. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Do people sell off their wigs? I think so. Okay. I mean, I've had people buy, off, buy wigs off my hair. So, yeah. Oh, okay. I like it. Just give it to me. I pay you. Yeah. Or um, I come to your shop. Hey, I've been using this. I can, you know, give it to you. Now, that comes to taking care of the wig again mm -hmm. yeah because it's, it boils down to a lot hair. of rumors about lies you know hair lies so that now there's <laughs> that one where you say you want to buy a wig off someone's head <laughs> <laughs> honestly <laughs> you know hair lies you now need... and then the story about <laughs> india um, yes how you get the, the hair pieces. temple hair all those kind of things uh -huh. we don't do indian hair okay so we can't really speak for them unfortunately how do you condition your wigs a customer brings hair, or personally my hair, I would um, do a shampoo, wash, and then I would uh, use my combination of moisturizers and um, conditioners and seal it off in a bag. Okay. And leave it to see for as long as I want. Okay. Yeah. Do you use um, the dryer or you let it air dry? Because that's like very important. Well, I, I always. Plus my hair, customers hair, we don't use heat to dry it because it really damages hair. I've seen that, I don't like it. I don't like how it looks when you are styling it. So okay. I always prefer you uh, leave it to air dry. So the, Even the, the customer hair. has to be patient in, in that regard because yes. some people are like, please, oh, please help me oh, get I my hair ready. 24 hours, mm -hmm. we can make that happen still with air. Perfume, oils, yeah. and wigs. I, I, I do not advise it. I don't use it. Oh, really? Always just take care of your hair. Wash your hair. Don't overwear. I mean, don't overdo because we sweat in our heads. I mean, okay. on our heads. We sweat on our scalp. So you don't want someone to stand beside you. Nigeria is humid. We are sweating. Yeah. And you don't want your yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> taking whiffs. So you want to do it for the community too <laughs> by, you know, giving your hair, you know, whether it's monthly or six weeks conditioning and wash okay do you still travel or you just have your your um i, I your don't seller know. sent to you yeah and you see that's the world that we live in today in the yes. sense that you know everything is accessible as long as you know where you're going or what you want to do in that industry so say people go people buy products from china that they don't even go there and what mm. mm. you know um containers so i haven't had the you know uh I haven't been on that trail where I need to start running around again. You know, I already have a relationship. It's a ten-year relationship. Okay, so, so you I trust send, the Yeah, person. I trust them. I send them an email, and back, we do our back and forth, and it's here DHL. Oh, okay. Controversies on Instagram about purchase of hair. You know, have you had experiences? Can you tell oh, us? Of something? course. I mean, you would uh, like when you do samples at first because always you know no matter buying what, hair online yeah mm -hmm. when you buy hair without actually physically touching it when you order them you when they send you samples because you want to start with samples i used to always start with samples i would order a sample of this a sample of that a full head of this just one each to know 
and they will send you the best. I've experienced those. They will okay. send you what you know, what you think that is the best. But when you make your bulk order, oh. you would find that it's mixed or everything is. And this is every business has its own risks, and this is part of the risk that comes with the hair business, especially when you don't physically go there or you don't you meet one of these very dodgy or shady people mm -hmm. and that's why when you find the one you trust you oh. just hang on there <laughs> wow a young girl is watching you now and wants you know you know some advice on how to go into the business mm -hmm. what would you tell her i would say what i did i started small i started a long time ago okay i had obviously you have your downtime you have your you know when your time when it's it's not looking as good your ups and downs will definitely come but persevere be strong keep doing what you love keep doing what you're passionate about i'm passionate about hair i love wigs beauty lifestyle is what i enjoy doing so you just keep going at it no matter how small and or no matter how small just start when I first started, when I first started selling hair, I bought hair for myself personally. I didn't. Okay. I, I yeah. just wanted to see it by myself, and I ordered it. I didn't know them. I ordered it based on trust. I spoke to one person. They sent it, and from there, start small. Yeah, and you grow gradually. Yep. Okay, you heard it from the. If you're a hair buff, you've heard it from the professionals, and you want to go into the business, especially. Start small and move on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doi, for um, allowing us into your space Thank you and for giving coming. us enough information, a lot of information on um, wigs and how to care for them. I hope I did enough. I hope we get a freebie <laughs> soon. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just kidding. Oh, but we should do the very best. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you. We've been talking to Doi Dopesi of Beso Beauty Bar. And um, I'm sure you've also been enlightened and informed in uh, some ways about how to take care of your wigs and uh, knowing what to buy and all the works. But all the same, do you, okay? Yep. Do what you can. Mm -hmm. And um, stay fly. And stay fly, okay. <laughs> <laughs> stay fly. <laughs> What's that other word you use now? <laughs> <I'm a flick. laughs> <laughs> All the same, just so your be wig just, on flip. you know, make sure you take off your or care of your hair on yeah. them. I don't know why I'm so particular your crown. about that. Your crown. <laughs> take care of your hair on them. Make sure it's healthy and yeah. smells nice. All the same, thank you so much. The show continues on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to ask your questions and doing will be there to answer. Um, the Instagram page, I'm sure that's the, the most popular one. Is right on the screen so you can follow and let us know um, what you need. Okay? Alright, that's how we round off today on Beauty Diaries. I am Namure Jane Remain beautiful inside the night.